is Harvey Gerst, and I designed these HG3 monitors for Trident. They're really an unusual near-field monitor in that there are no compromised monitors. You have a dual voice coil, 30. Yep. <laughs> sorry, you have a dual voice coil uh, subwoofer in each cabinet. They're ported, but unlike most ported speakers, we use an electronic roll-off to diminish the group delay. The other problem with most near-field monitors is you have the tweeter and the woofer both putting out vocals. Not a very good idea. So we put the vocals through here, crossing over at 320 and then crossing over at 3500. So that you have all the vocals coming out of one speaker, the bass coming out strictly here and the treble coming out here. One of the things that's also a problem is when you have a flat surface like this, you get edge diffraction, especially in the mid-range of the treble, bouncing off the front of the speaker box. We solved that by putting these in their own separate enclosure that pivots so that you can actually tilt them to get the exact sweet spot you want. At the same time, eliminate edge diffractions by putting it in the curved column. All told, you've got a 2 dB treble boost or full attenuation, 2 dB mid-range or full attenuation. You have a power light that also shows you when you're getting uh, into clipping, which occurs at about 132 dB on peaks. It turns red. 140 watts driving this, 80 watts driving this. Um, so far, we have a lot of indoor scenes like Al Schmidt, Ed Shearney, Ted Perlman, Chuck Ainley, uh, Frank Filippetti, and I'm pretty sure Vassenberg and Bruce Smedean are going to come out of these too. Uh, oh, and George Oxberger. He thinks these are great. So, this is the new Trident HG3. It's going to sell for somewhere around, we're hoping to keep it under $5,000 a pair, but it's flat down to 30 cycles. And that's pretty hard to do with any near field monitor.